The following is a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam. First Canto, Fifth Chapter, Text Number 14 through 16. Given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded on June 11th, 1969, at the New Bindavan Farm Community. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Pagunitananda Sri Adhaita Gadadha Shubhaja Vibhoda Sri Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari Hari Tatanna Tha Kim Chanajad Vibhakshata Pithak disastat kitanama kitarupa nama bhi nakar hichit ka pi chadus hitama thi laveta bata hata no ribas Now we are discussing in the structure of Narada to his disciple Bath. Uh, such a learned scholar, Bhaste, he is known as Vedavyas, the authority on all Vedic literature. <coughs> and he is supposed to be incarnation of Nara, exalted position. He still, he requires the instruction of his spiritual master. That is the way, a Vedic way. Avaroha uh, pantha, aroha pantha. Aroha pantha means inductive process. <coughs> to know from here, uh, from the lower status to the higher status. <coughs> speculating method, an ascending process. And avarohapantha is didactic process, getting knowledge from higher authority. So our Vedic understanding is to receive knowledge from the authorities. <coughs> that is perfect knowledge. Uh, there are three kinds of processes to receive knowledge. Pratyakha, Aitiksha, and Sabda. Pratyakha means by direct perception, experimental knowledge. And Aitiksha, or Anuman, Anuman, hypothesis. It may be like this, perhaps like this, just like modern scientists say, perhaps it is like this. That is called Anuman, hypothesis. And another process is Shabda Prama, uh, Suti Prama. Shabda means sound vibration, and Suti means oral deception. So out of three processes, the sabda praman or uh, receiving uh, vibration, sound vibration from authority by oral reception, that is considered to be perfect. So Narad Muni says, before this, Narad Muni has advised Vyasadeva that in order to uh, release all these conditioned souls, you just describe the uh, wonderful activities of the Supreme Personality of God. Simply uh, by hearing Uttama Slokas, Gunanubha, 
Uttama Shloka, Uttama Shloka means the Supreme Lord, who is described by transcendental literature or very fine uh, scholarly language is called Uttama Shloka. Uttama Shloka sa Urukrama sa that will save all conditioned souls from being implicated in the classes somewhere. Now, Vasudev has already described, uh, there he has made many Puranas, eighteen Puranas, so there is mention of God's activities, just like in Mahabharata, he has put this uh, Bhagavad Gita. So, Narad Mani says that Pithak Dishas Tat Pitarupa Nama Bhi Tato Annatha Kinchana Jad Vivakhata. If you do not exceptionally, exclusively describe simply the pastimes of the un- uncommon activities of the Lord, they Otherwise, as you have given as a sidelight, uh, as you have described Bhagavad Gita, the activities of Krishna, as a uh, sideline, not actually the whole Mahabharat is full of activities of Krishna. Uh, but Krishna is only a scene in the Mahabharat. He is speaking uh, in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. So, Narada Muni says that sort of description will not be very much conjugal because the people are not steady. They are anxiety, their mind is disturbed in so many ways, exactly like a boat moving in the tossing of the waves of the sea. So, this sort of understanding of God uh, will not give them uh, much benefit. You describe completely on the pastimes, on the activities of the Supreme Lord. That will give people release from this material clutches. So <clears throat> the next verse says, uh, Bas they may say that, uh, sir, I have uh, already compiled so many books, uh, eighteen Puranas, Mahabharata, even Vedanta Sutra. Uh, so that, are they not sufficient a literature to revive Krishna consciousness? So in reply to that, Nara says, Jugu Sritang Dharma Kritenu Shasata sabhava rakta samhāna vitikra. sabhava rakta samhāna vitikra. sabhava rakta means by nature. Just like uh, Vedic scripture says, by nature every living entity has a propensity for sex life, for intoxication. Loki Bhavaya Amisa Madhva Seva Nityastu Jantu. Jantu means living entities. Nitya. Ah, so long he is in contact with this material world, he has got a natural propensity for sex life and intoxication. Babaya means sex life. And Amisha means uh, uh, meat eating. Amisha, meat eating. Sex life, meat eating. And Madhva Seva. Madhva Seva means intoxication, drinking liquor. It is not unnatural uh, to drink uh, wine or liquor or to eat meat and to have free sex life. That is the desire of all conditions. So, uh, therefore, we say, by nature. <coughs> Uh, uh, nobody is taught in the educational institution how to drink, 
or how to eat meat or how to enjoy sex life. Natural. That is natural. Sabhava <coughs> Raktasya and eat these things you describe as dharma, as religious principles, then they are doomed. Just like a man is addicted to commit theft. He has got a habit of stealing. And if I say, oh, oh, stealing is very nice art, uh, you can go on with you, with it. Uh, then where is the formation? Uh, there is no question of he is already addicted. So it is encouragement. But similarly, uh, in the Dharma Shastra, uh, just like Mahabharata, there is, uh, where is the cut cut hours? Uh, don't make that sound. <coughs> Just like uh, in marriage ceremony, marriage ceremony, uh, of course, in your country the marriage ceremony is different. In India, still, uh, people uh, spend as much as possible in the marriage ceremony. Uh, Millions of dollars. If one man is rich, uh, he'll spend for his son's marriage, his daughter's marriage. Uh, that is a great credit. Oh, this man is very a rich man. He's spending so much money. Uh, so uh, now there are so many religious performances, ritualistic performances. Uh, you have to spend money, so you must find out so many performances. So they have all this in the Shastra. Uh, so Narad Muni says that uh, what is this marriage ceremony? The marriage ceremony is to allow the boy and the girl for legitimate or oh, uh, sex. That's all. So that propensity he has already got. And what is the use of making such propaganda? and spending so much money. Uh, very practical proposition. Uh, but in the Shastra, there are. Similarly, uh, uh, drinking or meat eating. Uh, and, uh, according to Vedic Shastra, meat eating is not allowed uh, by purchasing from the slaughterhouse. No. Uh, they, there is motive, the marriage ceremony or the meat eating, the so much ritualistic performances, there is motive. What is that motive? The motive is restriction. Uh, just like uh, the same example, marriage, the real idea is to restrict the boy and the girl to one woman and one man. That is the idea. Men I if he's not married, uh, then he will be just like cats and dogs. So idea is very good. But Narad Muni says, after all, you are coming to the point of sex life. <coughs> so why so much propaganda? Uh, similarly, for meat eating, there is also sanction in the Shastra. Uh, Tamasik Shastra, not Shasti, Shasti. There are three divisions of Shastra. Shasti, Rajasik, and Tamasik. Those who are meat eaters cannot give up meat, eat, meat eating. And for them, the prescription is all right, you can eat meat, but uh, you have to sacrifice one goat, but not cow. Uh, the sac for sacrifice, the animal is recommended goat. So you can uh, I mean, cut throat of a goat in the presence of Goddess Kali and uh, you can eat. There are so many prescriptions. But that is also restriction. That Kali worship is one day in a month uh, on the dark moon day. What is called dark moon? Amavasya. Full moon and. Eh? No, no. 
Now, when when the, there is uh, on that particular there is no moon in the sky. Eh? It's called dark moon. Yes. So that Kali Puja is recommended on the dark moon day. Uh, that is one day in a month. Uh, similarly, according to marriage life, the sex life is also allowed one day in a month. Uh, the whole thing is restriction. Similarly, drinking wine also, there is uh, Devi Puja. That is also once in a year or something like that. The whole point is restriction. But after all, uh, uh, this is drinking and meeting and meeting. So Narad Muni says that you have described these things for which a man has got natural propensity in a religion. So it is Yuga uh, This is most terrible. This, uh, in the restricted system of marriage, drinking and meat eating, described in the Shastra, that is also condemned by Nara. Yuga uh, Sitam. Yuga Sitam Dharma Kritenu Shasata. You are the leader of the shastras, you are writing shastras, people will follow you. Uh, just like in Vedi, Vedas, there is a commendation of sacri- in the sacrifice, animal killing. But that animal killing is not killing. Uh, this, there was a, a, a discussion between Lord Chaitanya and Chandkaji, the Mahavidan uh, magistrate. That story, perhaps you know, that he started civil disobedience movement. And <clears throat> the uh, Brahmins of Navadvet, they complained to the Mohammedan man. At that time, Bengal was being governed by the Pathans, Mohammedan. And so there was Mohammedan magistrate called Kaji Sahib. So the Brahmins, the Laws complain to the Kaji Sahib that this boy, Nimai Pandit, he has started one movement, uh, Hare Krishna, and people are uh, being uh, enthused, uh, excited to chant this uh, Hare Krishna mantra, and he is making propaganda that simply by chanting Hare Krishna, he will get all perfection. So the Brahmins thought that if this boy makes propaganda and popularizes the Hare Krishna movement, uh, uh, then uh, what about ourselves? They are priestly class. Then how will you live? So they lost complaint to the Chantkari that he is doing something against our Vedic rituals. It is not Hindu religion. And of course, he was marvelled in mindset, but after all, uh, he was meant for uh, giving justice to the people. So when big Brahmins complained, he took action. And he sent some constables to warn the followers of Lord Chaitanya that you are disturbing. Uh, you are disturbing this Hare Krishna chanting. You cannot do this. Uh, there is complaint. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was informed that the Chant Kaji has warned us not to chant Hare Krishna. What shall we do? Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, don't care. Go on chanting. Go on chanting. Uh, so then when the Master saw that they have not stopped, then he sent some constables and uh, government uh, police force who broke their midangas and dispersed the crowd. So this information was given to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he said, all right, then we shall, uh, uh, I will say, issue this uh, civil disobedience. Uh, so he called for many thousands of people. He was very popular. This incident shows that even he was at that time sixteen years old boy, 
you are so learned, Nimai Pandit, that he defeated a great scholar. Uh, and at the same time, he was very popular. Uh, because by his simple calling, uh, many hundred thousands of people gathered with Midangas and they began Kirtan in the street and went to the house of that Kaji. So at that time, Kaji thought that this is a mass movement. So, uh, my order will not be, there will be some disturbance. So uh, he came to his senses, and then he wanted to make some compromise with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, first of all, there was some discussion. Because he was also a very learned scholar, Chant Kaji, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was also a very learned scholar. And so, first of all, he compromised Chant Kaji. Uh, uh, Nimai, uh, you are a boy, and uh, in our village relationship, uh, you are just my nephew because your grandfather, your mother's father, I call him Chacha. Chacha means uncle. So, in that sense, your mother is my sister, so you are my nephew. Why you are so angry upon your uncle? Uh. <laughs> so he said, uh, yes, my dear uncle, uh, uh, I have come my uncle's house to be received very nicely, but uh, you went upstairs, why? Uh, I am very glad that you have come down in this way. <laughs> the things were, uh, then he first of all asked Chant Kashi, uh, yes, my dear uncle, he was Metanan uncle, Mamu, Mamu, Mama, Mama means. Metanala. Uh, my dear Mama, uh, Uncle, uh, what is your religion that you eat your father and mother? That was his challenge first. Well, what sort of religion you have got? Uh, he said, oh, what do you say? We eat our father? Yes. Because you eat uh, cows, so cow gives you milk. She is your mother. You drink milk and kill your mother. And the bull, uh, see, uh, helps you in agriculture, producing grain, just like father gives you grain to eat. So you are killing your father and mother, and how is that? Uh, so Chātkāji was also a very learned scholar. He said, well, this uh, cow killing is also recommended in your Vedas because there is um, cow sacrifice. Uh, so Chaitanya Mahamu replied, now we should know it, that uh, the animal sacrifice, according to the Vedic scripture, that is not killing. Uh, that is explained by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said that uh, in the previous uh, time, this uh, cow sacrifice was actually being done, that's all right. But that was not for killing that to give the cow, the old cow or bull, a new life now, by the power of mantra, just to uh, give evidence of the Vedic mantra, the Brahmins would sacrifice a cow, old cow or old bull in the fire and give, give him again new life. That one. Now in this age, there is no such powerful uh, um, Brahmin who can chant the mantras rightly and give, again, uh, rejuvenation, uh, uh, another new life. It is not possible. Therefore, in the sastra, these sort of sacrifices are forbidden. Asramedham gavalamam sannyasam palavaitrikam devarena sutatpati kalau pancha vivarjaya. So there was nice discussion. And the uh, uh, compromise was, uh, that uh, and uh, no more your Sankirtan movement will be checked by by men. Uh, so the point is that although in the, in the Vedic scripture there is recommendation uh, that animal uh, sacrifice uh, allowed, but that is not meant for killing. That is giving a new life. Uh, so when this animal sacrifice was going on simply for eating. Simply for eating. Just like in a particular mission, they say that we are devotees of Goddess Kali. 
Their real mission is uh, to eat meat. Therefore, they have become uh, devotees of goddess Kali. But actually, these sacrifices were not meant as explained by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for killing the animals. That was to test the power, the strength of the Vedic mantras. So, uh, Lord Buddha's movement was therefore started when people began to eat uh, meat like anything on the plea of Vedic sacrifice. So, Lord Buddha at that time, Lord Buddha means he is also incarnation of Krishna, he appeared to stop this animal king. That is the prayer of Lord Buddha who is saying. Ninnasi jagga vidhe rahat suti jatam sadaya ridaya darishita prasu ghatam kesa vadhita buddha sarira jaya jagadi sarira. Buddha said, just like we offer prayer to Nishinga Dev, tavakara kamala bari na kamat bhuta singam, dalita hiranna kashiputana bhingam, kesa vadhita narahari rupa jaya jagadi sarira. Similarly, there is prayer for Lord Buddha also. Uh, that, that prayer is Ninnasi Jagda Vidhe Rahahat Suti Jatam. Although in the Vedic literature there is a commendation for uh, animal sacrifice, uh, you are uh, forbidding. Well, no, this should not be done. Uh, therefore, Buddha, Buddhism is not Vedic religion because he. Uh, was against this Vedic sacrifice. Sadaya Ridaya Dasi. His main business was to stop this animal killing. But people wanted to give evidence from the Vedas. Therefore, he said, I don't care for your Vedas. Vedana Maniya Buddha Haila Nasti. Therefore, Sankaracharya came and he drove away the Buddhas from the land of India. That's a long history. So, this sacrifice. This animal killing, uh, that is also uh, uh, forbidding. Uh, Nargoni said that why you have bothered your head in that, that way, that you have made this, this is a, a type of religion, Jugakshitam. Uh, uh, this is abominable. Jugakshitam dharma kritin sasata. You are authority, and if you recommend animal uh, sacrifice, they will take it. They have got only the natural tendency and they will accept it. Uh, this is the religious process. And when they will be forbidden by other sinner person, they will not care for you. So, uh, it is Jugup Sita. It is Avamida. Jugup Sita Dharma Kriti Nusasata Sabhava Daktasa Mahan Vatikrama. It's a great mistake you have done. They will accept your authority and they will be steady in that uh, assertion, in that conviction. And namannate tasa nivarana. And if you say, uh, just like in other religious principles, if we say, uh, <coughs> don't eat meat. Uh, I, I had some conversation with some Christian priests. Uh, they, they put forward this argument, uh, why is we not this? Uh, our Christ uh, took place and why is we not? We must. They say like that. Uh, but Christ said that you, should, you shall not kill. Uh, so they cannot uh, give any proper explanation uh, why they kill. So in every religion, and Mohammedan religion, so he if this killing process or this drinking process or this, uh, which a, a man has got natural, that is exciting under the name of religion, then Nara says, then when actually they will be forbidden for higher elevation of life, they will not accept it. Therefore, your description in the Shastra of all this nonsense, Jugup uh, Sita, is abominable. Jugupsitam dharma kritinu sasata sahavara. The natural tendency there is. You should not uh, incite them more and more. Uh, yet he said that 
Pratuta viruddham eva. It is against jatamitta jugupsna samite. Jugupsitam nindam tamma karma. Jugupsitam, Siddhar Sami gives notes, nindam, ava minam, tammam karma. Tammam karma means that fruitive result. You do act something and you want to enjoy the fruit. That is called karma karma. Karma, karma, be karma. There are three kinds of activities. First, uh, uh, karma is prescribed duties. And akarma means uh, to do act, but uh, the result uh, is not enjoyable by you. And uh, there is bikarma. Bikarma means doing again. Uh, so uh, this karma karma, uh, people are engaged in dialectic ceremony uh, for uh, receiving uh, some result for sense gratification. That is nindam, that is avapinam. <coughs> nindam, sabhavata eva raktasya tatra rāgina purusasya dharma kṛte dharmārtham anusāsasya tatra mahāna bhutikha. Uh, so, uh, 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 this is not good for you. It is most abominable. Kutāya tatāha jasya bhakkata āyamavā mukha dharma, because they will accept it as authority, and they will think, this is religion, and they will not make further progress. They will stick to that principle. So therefore it is a Janātasya kāma karmā de annena tattva jñāne nā kriyamā. Tattva jñāne. When they will be at high, is higher truth. Just like those who are addicted to killing process, under the shadow of religious life, if they are saying that uh, you don't kill, this is not good. After all, this living entity is uh, uh, as good as you are, as you are also part and parcel of uh, Krishna or God. Similarly, uh, this cow or this animal is also part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, but he has got a different dress only. That does not mean that you should kill. If these things are uh, instructed for higher elevation of life, they will not accept. They will not accept. They will say, oh, my religion says this, I, my, I must do it. Tasya nivara nandana. Praktasya karma nivara nivara samatha metad na mannate kintu pravitti margan anavijitta vishang tadidi kalpurati. Because he has got already natural tendency. And if he is, there is sanctioned by religious, ritualistic, religious process, then he will stick to it. So you have not done very nice for us. That is. Namanati tasya nivaranangjana vichakhanasya arahati viritanga vibhu rananta parasya nivittita sukham. Because actually, if anyone wants real happiness, that happiness is not by uh, gratifying your senses. In the Bhagavad Gita also it is said that sukham atantikam jatpat otindriya grahyam Real happiness that is not perceived by this uh, gratification of this material sense. So nivittita, one has to seize from this material sense gratification, and then he can enjoy uh, the real happiness, which is transcendental to sense enjoyment. Uh, that, that is the instruction. Uh, in the in the Padma Purana also there is a verse, Ramante Jogina Anante. Those who are yogi, yogi means transcendentalist, uh, not the so-called yogi. Uh, those who have contacted the absolute truth. They are called yogi. So yogi, the actual a yogi, namante, they enjoy. They also enjoy. Why they are saying, no, 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 no. I was undergoing so much austerities and penances and regulative principles because they are trying for uh, <coughs> being elevated to the real platform of happiness. So namante, yogi, na anante. Everyone is hankering after happiness, either materialistic or spiritualistic. 
Uh, but the difference is that materialist is, uh, materialistic person, they are satisfied uh, with temporary happiness. And those who are transcendentalists, they are also seeking happiness, uh, that is, uh, real happiness, spiritual happiness, eternal happiness. Therefore, it is stated in the Padma Purana that Ravante Jogina Anante. Ananta means unlimited happiness. Uh, they enjoy unlimited happiness. Ravante Jogina Anante and Satyananta. And that is real happiness. Happiness does not mean it is for a few minutes. No. Happiness should continue eternal. Uh, one should be situated in that happiness so that other temporary happiness will not attract. Ramante, Jogina, Anante, Satyanande, Chidatmani. Chit, chit means uh, uh, that is full of knowledge, that is not in ignorance. Uh, this material happiness is in ignorance. And spiritual happiness is Suddha Sattva. Suddha Sattva means pure goodness. In the material world, there are three stages. Ignorance, patience, and goodness. The goodness back forth is very nice in the material world. But there is another platform which is called Suddha Sattva. Uh, Sattvam Visuddham Visuddham Vasudeva Sabdita. Uh, that is transcendental platform, and in that platform you can understand God. Uh, God is Vasudev and the Vasudev platform. So, ramante jogina anante satyanande chidatmani, that is chidatmani. Chit means knowledge, atmani means self. In uh, that platform, iti rama pade naso uh, parabrahma vitiyate. This is the description, this is the meaning of the word rama. Rama, this word comes from ramante, ram, ramdhat. Ram means enjoyment. And Rama means the full of pleasure. If you contact with Rama or Krishna, the absolute attractive, then you are placed in the absolute platform for eternal uh, enjoyment. And enjoyment is the goal of everyone's life. Uh, but the difference is that the materialist is trying to hanker after figuring enjoyment and uh, the transcendentalists, they are in hankering after uh, the spiritual enjoyment or eternal enjoyment. Enjoyment, anandamaya vyasa. Because enjoyment is our life. Uh, we cannot be void. That is not possible. Uh, therefore, the impersonalist, uh, uh, about impersonalists, these Bhagavad Bharsanis, that uh, although they rise up almost to the spiritual platform, but because they cannot enjoy, impersonalist means there is no enjoyment. There is simply light, uh, a, a life of knowledge. But simply knowledge will not make me happy. I must enjoy. It. I must have enjoyment. Anandamaya Vyasa. Because my nature is to enjoy. That enjoyment cannot be uh, done in the impersonal or void philosophy. That is not possible. Therefore, Bhagavad says, if somebody thinks that he has become liberated after undergoing uh, the process of impersonal philosophy and austerities and penances, the imp impersonalists, they also practice severe penances to attain to that Brahma state. <coughs> that is also a nice thing. But they cannot stay there because there is no enjoyment. Therefore, as I was saying the other day, that many sannyasis, they say that this world is false, Brahma is true. So, in spite of their rising to that platform of Brahma understanding, they again come down. Uh, that is uh, described in the Bhagavata. Arujya Krishna Param Padatapa. After undergoing severe penances and austerities, they may rise to the Brahma platform, but again falls down. Uh, why falls down? Anadita Jusmat Angha. Because they do not enjoy your association. They have neglected the association of Krishna and company. 
therefore we have no uh, i mean the self in uh, the, the same example can we explain just like if you go on a plane or sport me very high very high uh, there is void uh, all side void and uh, if you go very high 25000 miles uh, you will see void but that there you cannot stay uh you can travel for many years in that bar but if you don't take shelter in a planet then you will come back again to this planet <coughs> similarly the impersonalist they cannot stay in their impersonal uh understand simply they suffer uh, some trouble place a bhagavad gita says place of adhikara stesha A bhakta sakti to some those are attached. Those who are attached to this impersonal feature of the absolute truth, oh. they undergo greater trouble. Oh. We transcendentalists, uh, we personalists, we also, uh, uh, from the materialistic point of view, uh, we are our standard of living is not very upland. Uh, we lie down anywhere. We are our dresses are not so clean. Our rooms are not clean. So from the materialistic point of view, somebody comes. He says, "Oh, how wretched these people are living." Uh, that is also another kind of austerity. They adopt, but uh, that is uh, pleasing. In their uh, in so-called wretched condition, they are happy. Uh, they are happy. so they are there in both way but those who are as simply attached to the impersonal feature uh, uh, their uh, trouble is more uh, painful that is uh, described in the bhagavad gita so vichakkhana uh, sarhati vedita vibhu so one has to cease one has to make a stop of this material enjoyment then one can uh, approach to the spiritual enjoyment uh, you cannot enjoy spiritual life if you stick to the materialistic way therefore we have got some uh, a little restriction that you cannot do this you cannot that although the, uh, those who are addicted to this uh, uh, life uh, this restriction is sometimes painful but uh, it is required uh, unless just like to cure your disease you have to follow some regulatory principle of prescribed by the physician similarly uh, in order to cure yourself from this material disease you have to accept nivritti nivritti that means uh, uh, ceasing this process of material life nivritti tasakam pravartta manasya gunain anatmana tato bhavan darsay chestito so how it can be uh hati uh, nivitti uh, seizing this materialistic way of life so narad muni says that you simply describe the activities of the lord krishna and by hearing uh, simply the activities of krishna may uh, one will be very easily able to cease from this materialistic way of life uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu also recommended that uh people should be given chance to hear shrimad bhagavatam or krishna katha krishna katha means uh, speaking or uh, uh, i mean say narration about krishna the bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam the chaitanya mahapurush also recommended that let them be situated in their own position there is no uh, necessity of changing his position give him chance give him chance to hear uh, then gradually uh, um, parang vijayate shri krishna sankirtana so our attempt is we are opening uh, so many uh, branches the idea is that people should get chance of hearing about the supreme lord either by chanting this mahamantra or this is also chanting uh, what i am speaking before you from shrimad bhagavatam All Bhagavad Gita. That is also chanting. This is also Kirtan. Uh, Kirtan means describe. So you can describe the glories of the Lord either by musical instruments or by chant, uh, singing, or you can describe the glories of the Lord 
by reading from authoritative scripture, the both of them are called kīrtā. Uh, this, this Bhagavata reading is also uh, described uh, as kīrtā by Sukadev Goswāma. Uh, Avabhad bhaiyāsa ki kīrtā. Kīrtā is, is, is called kīrtā. Uh, Savanam kīrtā. The process is sravan and kīrtā, hearing and chanting. So, uh, Purikrit Maharaj, uh, he attained salvation and perfection simply by hearing. And uh, Sukadeva Goswami attained salvation and perfection simply by chanting. Uh, this chanting means describing uh, the glories of the Lord from Srimad Bhagavatam. So he says, uh, Prabhattamanasya gunai ranātman tato bhavān darsayo So people are so much entangled by the modes of material nature. So in order to get them free from this entanglement, you show the path. Simply let them hear, let them uh, give oral reception uh, to the uh, wonderful activities of the Lord. Uh, that activity, because absolute, Krishna is absolute truth. So Krishna and Krishna's activities are the same, because it is absolute, it is not duality. Uh, in the material world, myself and my activities are different. Uh, uh, but uh, this, it is, this, this world is a uh, dual world. But in the absolute world, Krishna and Krishna's pastimes, Krishna and Krishna's name, Krishna and Krishna's quality, Krishna and Krishna's fame, they are all Krishna. Uh, Krishna and Krishna's associates, they are all Krishna. Uh, Krishna is cowherd, boy. So Krishna and the cows, they are all Krishna. That we have to learn. They are not different from Krishna. Krishna and the gopi, they are all Krishna. Ananda chinmaya rasa pratibhavita. So we have to understand that. So anyway, if we try to associate simply by chanting or hearing, that means we are associating with Krishna. And the more we associate with Krishna, the more we become purified. Just like more you remain with the fire, you become warmer, warmer, warmer. And one day you become so warm, he exactly like fire. The example I have given that if you put an iron rod in the fire, it becomes warm, warmer, warmest, and then it becomes red. And when it is red, it is no longer iron, it is fire. Similarly, simply by chanting and hearing, you spiritualize yourself. So a day will come. When this material uh, body also will be fully spiritualized. Uh, then that fully spiritualized means there will be no more material activity. Simply these spiritual activities will be there. So Narad Muni is instructing Basdev and his listeners. 